correct me on that later if I'm wrong on the pronunciation, but he's an attorney and the president of the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education. Um, he uh, is a writer. He's had his right or he's a columnist for the Huffington Post and the Daily Caller. And he's also had some pieces appear in the Washington Post, Los Angeles Times and the Boston Globe. He's here or joins us today to talk about his book, Unlearning Liberty, Campus Censorship and the End of American Debate. How you doing, Greg? Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, Mickey, get your name right. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's not really spelled that much like it's pronounced, and it's a uh, Lukianov. Oh, I said that the first time, mm-hmm. and then I was corrected. But, you know, I tried to, you know, okay. Lu- oh no, no, I, don't, no, I, I tried to get my family to change the spelling so it'd be spelled more like it was pronounced. But what you going to do? I, I understand. Lukianov. Well, tell us a little bit about your day job there. Sure. Well, um, I'm the president of FIRE, and and I'm a constitutional lawyer, and I defend uh, free speech, freedom of religion, due process, freedom of conscience on college campuses, and that is, to say the least, a full-time job. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, We have heard the horror stories. Uh, uh, Your book is called Unlearning Liberty, Mm -hmm. uh, Campus Censorship and the End of American Debate. I want this is a topic that greatly interests me. I, I, but I want to uh, let, let's give you an overview. Give us an overview, if you would, first of what's going on. Sure. Well, I've done this for the last eleven years, and I'm the president of Fire, uh, which, which has been around since 1999 to defend uh, student rights on campus. And I, after doing this for such a long time, I decided to put all of the cases I'd seen, or at least some of the worst cases I'd seen, in, in one uh, one volume to explain how many bad lessons students are learning about what it means to learn in a free society in, in the modern politically correct university. Um, and the, I take it to the next step where I try to explain that these terrible illiberal lessons are actually uh, bleeding into the larger society and um, uh, harming the way we talk to each other, but also getting uh, the next generation of leaders much too comfortable being told what to do, what to think, what they can believe, what they can't, um, and not really understanding a lot of what it means to live in a free society. Hmm. Um, you know, the college campuses around the country have been notorious now for 40 years mm-hmm. for having uh, – liberalism dominate uh, the the professorships mm-hmm. you know and and uh, that's that's a general accepted consensus i think yeah uh, uh, uh and so what's different or is there anything different today than there was say 20 years ago Oh, it's much worse than it was 20 years ago, okay. um, and it was really bad 20 years ago. Uh, but the main thing that's different is that, um, and, it, and it relates to uh, the, the huge increase in cost uh, of higher education, um, that while we're paying more and more, I, I talk about the top 100 countries, uh, sorry, top 100 universities in the country, they now charge between 55 and $60,000 a year. And what you're getting for all that extra money is a new and ever-expanding army of bureaucrats um, who think of it as their entire job to police um, the beliefs, words, thoughts of students um, and to punish those who have uh, any of those that they dislike um, and, and to, uh, to, to deny them basic protections like due process. And so what's changed really is that the university bureaucracy has grown so much that they're now, and it's replaced by you know, these true believers in political correctness, that you end up with a situation that's uh, where administrators aren't just, uh, just stopping at the classroom. They're going into the dorms. They're going into the daily lives and even the off, uh, off-campus expression of students to try to uh, bleach it of anything they dislike. Unlearning Liberty is the name of the book, Cancer, uh, uh, excuse me, Campus Censorship and the End of American Debate. This is so, uh, and by the way, where do you get your book, Greg? Um, we're, uh, unlearning, uh, you can find it at unlearningliberty.com. Uh, uh, unlearningliberty.com. The, the uh, irony with a capital I here is it's so obvious, though, that these college campuses are supposed to be places where you go and you explore the world and you, you, know, you're, 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 you, you, you are exposed and you know you're getting into this. To different cultures, different ideas, different experiences. So everything's just not like you were raised in. And mm-hmm. quite frankly, that's what one of the things I appreciated about my college yeah. experience, and and the reason I wanted my children to go to go to school, go go to college, and, and experience that. 
because it challenges your thinking and it makes you defend your positions yeah. and it makes you sharper and get ready for the world. That's my view, uh, intellectually. Uh, but the irony here is that what's going on is what Greg documents on campuses is these people who are very liberal claim to be tolerant right. and diverse and accepting, except if you don't agree with them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, then, and then what happens, Greg? Well, it's especially stark in the treatment of Christian students, and that's definitely something that I've, I've seen uh, in, in all my 11 years, and it was even much worse than I even had any reason to believe it was. Why is that? Why do they, why do they pick on the Christians? Um, I think it's partially because, the, because the, the, you know, the theory, at least, you, you know, if you ask them, it's that Christianity is part of the, and the, forgive the, the, the phrase, but dominant paradigm is kind of like the way that they put it. And therefore, you know, it's okay to sort of, you know, push back against, uh, you know, what they see as, as the oppressive structure of our, of our society. Um, but really, it's sort of an excuse for them to pick on people who don't share their beliefs. Because when, when the rubber hits the road, you know, like some, some students on campus might disagree with, um, where some Christian students stand on sexual morality and gay rights and that kind of stuff. But when you bring up the fact that the Orthodox uh, uh, Jews believe the same thing, that the, uh, that the Muslims believe the same thing, and they're not being run off campus, um, the, the best answer I've gotten to that was just a, a, at a Wright State University just having an, an administrator just completely lose her mind. Like she had no response to it whatsoever. <laughs> and, it, and it just seems like it's okay to pick on Christian students uh, yeah. on campus. The, the, these are the tolerant people who are going after the Christian. And they, have no, and they have no consistency in it. And so, so what we've ended up having um, in, in case after case is universities is coming up with excuse after excuse for, uh, you know, kicking uh, uh, Christian groups off campus, um, not allowing them to sign statements of faith. Uh, this is currently going on at Vanderbilt in Tennessee. This was happening at Tufts in Massachusetts. And meanwhile, we had a case just like it where there was a Muslim group that, uh, in Louisiana um, that asked students to sign a statement of faith that, that uh, included its beliefs on sexual morality. And when we wrote Louisiana State University, they immediately said, oh, it would be wrong for us to judge the Muslim student beliefs and tell them what they should believe. Uh, and, you know, in the book <laughs> I talk about, right, and, and it's dangerous. also wrong to do that to the Christian group. They don't, yeah, right. I know. Uh, uh, talking to Greg uh, Lukanoff, L-U-K-I-A-N-O-F-F, his parents gave him that name. <laughs> uh, the book is titled Unlearning Liberty, Campus Censorship and the End of American Debate. Uh, you can go read about Craig's, uh, Greg's work there. They do excellent work uh, uh, spotlighting just what he's talking about here today at thefire.org. Mm -hmm. Fire is, uh, means, what, what's it short for? Uh, Foundation for Individual Rights and in Education. I'll tell you, Mickey, what happened just, Greg, uh, just last week to me, I was talking with a young man uh, 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 who goes to a major university, not my son, but but he goes to because uh, my, my son goes to a major university, and he he was uh, talking about attending a marriage, and this kid was talking about this young man really, he's about twenty, a sophomore, talking about attending a marriage and family class mm -hmm. on campus. Okay, and he said, you know, I went in there expected to talk about marriage and family, and, and you know, and and so forth, and the professor every day wanted to bring up gay marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, just day after day after he's got to get tired, tired of it. I just withdrew from the class yeah. <laughs> because, you know, she was obviously trying to push a yeah, political agenda she that she agreed. And, you know, um, that, that, that kind of thing, and what, what she was trying to, what the person was trying to do, the professor was trying to do was to, to, uh, in, indoctrinate, oh, not, yeah. not, not challenge the thinking of, mm -hmm or allow for a debate and have it be one or two days. It's like every day, you know. Yeah. So they want to indoctrinate or change. I guess, Greg, some of these professors think these kids, especially these Christian kids, come from, uh, you know, fundamentalist, Yahoo, backwoods, racist, bigoted, homophobic homes, and it's their job, the professor's job, to root that stuff out of that kid. To fix them. Yeah, to fix them. Isn't that what's going on here, some of it? 
Well, it's actually really, uh, it's funny you should say that because there's a whole, almost a whole chapter I devote to this program at the University of Delaware where it's not that often where you get uh, people to say and things that get printed in public that that's what they think of the American public, but in University of Delaware, administrators were willing to go ahead and print stuff uh, from the uh, residents' lives who are the, the dormitory police. Um, uh, 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 seminars where they're taught that um, racism is only something that exists in white people and can only exist in white people with no sense of irony that this was, of course, itself racist. Um, but it cannot exist in anybody who's not. Um, and that they have this completely contemptuous view of the rest of, uh, of at least, you know, white uh, and Christian America that is cartoonish when, it, when you start uh, taking, it, taking it apart and, and looking at the way they look at it, when they also at the same time claim to be open-minded and, uh, and uh, um, intolerant. It's like, a, it's like having a free exchange of ideas that we like. Kind of a thing, you know, and so I want to ask you this, though, Greg, and and maybe this is kind of one of those questions that we kind of have to rewind just a bit. So I was a a, a missionary evangelist to universities um, for a number of years. And Mm -hmm. also while I was in school, I was an RA. I was a resident advisor. Okay, so Mm -hmm. I saw a lot, experienced a lot, was told a lot. But I think what people might miss, because there's some people who hear this and they go, that's a shame. Those poor kids, you know, in college today, they don't have a fair shot at hearing, you know, all of the ideas that are out there. But this is further reaching than that, isn't it, Greg? Don't, you know, what what happens at the college level or at the university level has far-reaching effects. We're talking about future politicians. We're sure. talking about future policy makers. Mm-hmm. And now it's not that they're getting to kind of be exposed to all these ideas. They can make up their own mind. They're really being told, here's your mind. Here's mm-hmm. how we want you to think. And that's going to have far-reaching effects on us as America as a whole, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think it, achieve, it, it achieves a, a number of things. And, you know, probably the subtlest harm of it is that when you have censorship and you have pressure to conform your beliefs, it doesn't necessarily uh, to change people's minds. Um, what it leads any, you know, someone who's being savvy to do is just to talk to the people they already agree with and to join the clubs that they already agree with and not to really speak out to the professors they disagree with. And that's why I think when you talk to students today, you might not hear as much horror and disgust at how politically correct the campuses are, even though they are, you know, in- incredibly politically correct, partially because they've learned what rules to play by. But the problem is, by playing with the, by those rules, is you don't end up talking to people that you disagree with. You don't end up learning things you could otherwise learn. And it ends up having this effect of, of making people's echo chambers even thicker, as opposed to doing what higher education could be doing, which is opening minds. Mm. We're, we're talking to uh, Greg Lukanoff, and uh, his book is titled Unlearning Liberty, Campus Censorship, and the End of American Debate. Give us one or two examples, Greg, of what you've been de- of, of something. You've mentioned a couple, but give us a one or two other examples, if you would, what you've helped on. Oh, sure. Now, our cases are truly ridiculous. One that's gotten a lot of media attention, but deservingly so, is a famous case from a couple years ago from Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, where a student who was working his way through school as a janitor was reading a book called Notre Dame versus the Klan. The book was about the defeat of the Klan when they marched on Notre Dame in 1924 and celebrates the defeat of the Klan. But because it had Klan in the title and a picture of the rally in which they marched on Notre Dame on the cover, he was found guilty of racial harassment without so much as a hearing. Wow. Just because it offended somebody, and he and this poor, you know, I, I interviewed the student, and he was like, "I was trying to explain it. it's an anti-Klan book. I, I, I can't believe that, but it didn't matter. Um, it offended somebody, and that was the bottom line in that case." So did you win? Oh yeah, yeah. You won the it, case? It, it, it took a, it, it took a, a fire is very effective. We we win most of our cases. Um, that being said, we've been dealt a little bit of a blow by the Supreme Court in a case called CLS Martinez, uh, which I which I talk a lot in the book. Um, but which has legitimized this practice that we've seen against, you know, against particularly Christian students. Um, when uh, you were talking earlier about people being pressured to believe different things, there's a really nightmarish case about a student named Emily Brooker, who was an evangelical Christian um, down in, uh, at, at Missouri State University. And she uh, was t- t- told as an assignment that she had to sign a petition um, supporting gay adoption, uh, the rights of gay parents to adopt. And she she did the the entire assignment, but she wasn't going to uh, sign a document to lobby the government for a cause she didn't believe in. And they dragged her into a meeting. They were threatening to uh, 
pretty much expel her from the program and demanding that she show that her beliefs come closer to theirs. All of this, all of this stuff that showed absolutely no respect for the idea that this is someone who was committed to being a social worker. She wanted to, 